Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Berlin Planning and Zoning meeting. Today is going to be uh, May 4th. It's 2023, and the first uh, item of the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. So I'm going to ask everyone just to stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And thank you much for that. Um, as far as the roll call goes, do you want to do a roll call? Okay. Uh, she was excused. Andrew Lou Miller? Here. In case anyone didn't hear what I said was June Daly while my, my microphone was off and she asked to be excused. Andrew Lou. Um, Diane Jorsey asked to be excused. Mm -hmm. Tim Zygma? Okay. I. He indicated to me he would be joining remotely if possible. Okay, so right now he's not available. So um yeah, excuse. Put him down as excuse, please. And we'll know if he arrives, it'll mm -hmm. be noted in the record as to the timing. Um Brian Rogan. Here. Joan Veely. Here. Scott Hamill. Here. Don Dakin. Here. And Steve Bayala Jr. Okay, who is an alternate? Um, because we have two seated members that are not with us, I'll ask Mr. Dake. They come? Dakin. Dakin, thank you. You may have to correct me a couple of times. Okay, I'll just call you John uh, to be seated for the meeting. And for those of you who don't know, uh, I, I was uh, remiss in not introducing you to the group last time around. Um, that's my bad. I think we were caught up with technology and not being able to start the meeting in it. So I, I I apologize for that. Thank you very much for the welcome. Uh, there you go. All right. So now you're on board. So you get to pay the price. All right. Absolutely. So we have the review and the approval of the minutes for April 20th. Um, do you want to do, morning. do you want the motion now or do you want the approval? I think it's fine to add it. Okay. Now. Okay. Go ahead. All right. For PZ agenda 5 4 2023, please motion. I will, I'll make the motion to add. 7.C. Commission business. Discussion and possible action on submission of the two part application of 1906 Berlin LLC. One, proposed zone text amendment for new section 11.EE planned residential infill development, inclusionary multifamily residential use with a housing opportunity or workforce housing component prepared by Christopher J. Smith, Esquire. Alter and Pearson LLC, and two, site plan application, Spruce Brook Apartments of Patrick Snow, 1906 LLC, and 1906 Berlin Turnpike for demolition of all existing structures and pavement is proposed following by filling grading construction of multifamily structures, 52 units, zero various underground uh, utilities, and paved parking areas both of which were submitted April 27th, 2023. Okay, and we're gonna add that to after commission business, which is gonna be the end of the regular agenda. It'll be at- um, Section seven. C. That would become seven C? All righty. So do we have a motion to add that as seven C? Yes. I'm, I'm oh, you make the motion. Do I have a second? Yeah. I have a second by Mr. Hamill. For the discussion on this, then all those in favor, aye. aye. Those opposed, so moved. All righty, so we'll go that. Now let's go back to the review of the minutes for the approval on the 20th. And, um, you know, I, I took a look at the minutes and I only saw one little adjustment, and that was on page number five. About midway, it states that Chairman Billy stated a survey could be done or a public hearing held. However, she wasn't sure what the response would be. I'd like to change that or or and. Um, I wanted to, because um, I know that the uh, the mayor was interested in having a public hearing. He wanted to do a survey, and I talked about doing a survey on line running tandem with another information sur uh, information session that we would have at the town hall, not at the school. So, or a should be changed to and. I just want to make a quick note. Uh, Commissioner Zygmunt is now joining remote. 
Oh, Tim, you're online. Okay, good. All right, so you're no longer excused, Tim. But I'm no longer excused. All right, but John, you're still on for June, okay? I'll make the motion to approve the minutes as amended. Okay, do we, we have the motion, do we have a second? Second by John Daikin. I'm gonna get that. All righty, uh, further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, so move. Okay, scheduling of public hearings. We have a subdivision application of Kokomo Brothers for five lot subdivision at lot 46 and 46D, block 142, 170 Wilkes Pond Road and 243 Somerset Road. Um, the suggested date is June 1st, 2023. Um, do we have a motion? So moved. All right, thank you, Mr. Rogan, Commissioner Rogan. Do we have a second? Okay. Second by Ms. Millard. Further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed to move. Request for bond releases. A, uh, request of Earl Wickland for release of the bond of phase one, Nature's Edge Court subdivision. Um, all right, what do we have on this? Hold on. Yes, go right ahead. Yes. Go right ahead. I would like to request that both A and B be postponed. The town engineer that usually does the inspections has been out ill and unable to complete the inspection while I, and I was on vacation, so. Vous vie, that's fine with me. So do we need a motion, a motion to continue or uh, motion, A and B? Yes, motion to continue. Mm -hmm. yeah, it would be best if you did them separately. Or in a, when's All right. meeting? Um, May 18th. I'll make the uh, motion to continue items A and B until May 18th. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Rogan. Do we have a second? Second. Second, second by John Dykin. Scott. Scott Hamill got it. Sorry. All right. Sorry, Tim. You weren't fast enough. You got to hit that button. <laughs> All right. Um, further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, so move. So now we have the request of Marcus Bacon for a bond, uh, bond reduction at Focus physical therapy phase two and is the engineer also out of town yes we've looked at I, oh you looked I, at it I, ins I inspected the property wow and then uh jim horrible also took a look at it and we looks good to us it looks good you're all satisfied so this would be a reduction down to this includes landscaping so for maintenance purposes the landscaping has to be in for a year prior to it being fully released so it would be the reduction down to 25%. Do we have a number on that? Or do I have a number here? I'm sorry, I wasn't here for putting your agenda together. Oh, that's all right. I know the numbers off the top of my All right. We'll just take it at the 25%. I don't see it either. Approximately do you? Do you... I can do. Okay. Um, I think we probably do by percentage, right? Yeah, I, I don't know. Normally they tell us what they're holding and what's left or whatever. But hang on. Not here. It's not here. The applicant yeah. sitting. Can we ask the applicant though? Well, Oh, sticky note data. Okay. Those are all these. Don't lose it, though. <laughs> so, Will, there, if you don't mind making the motions for us to verify the, the calculation, um, it would be a 75% release of $2,640. $2,640. That would be the final amount that's kept on bond? No, that's the amount that's released. It's 2000 what? 640 that would be 75% of 35.20 that's being held. So, again. Okay, so those numbers, you know, I mean, like I said, I'd like to. All right, so you're saying 30, 35, 20, 20 is what's held right now. There's 26. Okay, and so we're going down by. So I will make the motion upon staff verification to reduce the bond to $880. Okay, so we have a motion. 25% of which is 25, which is 25%. Okay. So we have a motion by Mr. Rogan. Do we have a second? Second by who? By Mr. Hamill. 
for further discussion? Then all those in favor, aye. Tim? Aye. Okay, thank you, so moved. All right, on to commission business. All right, congratulations. That was that, boy, you were out of here fast. Thank goodness, all right. Uh, commission business acceptance of a site plan amendment application of Mark Chamberlain, 18-36 Willowbrook LLC for a fence at lot 18-36 Willowbrook Drive, but this was withdrawn. And should that have even been between before us? It sounds almost like a... So this item A was withdrawn, so we don't have to do anything with it. All right, let's move on. Discussion of the 2023 Plan of Conservation and Development draft document revisions and edits. Okay. Um, we we put this on the agenda one because the draft document had got you know published you know and distributed, but mm -hmm. we actually have to. And then it was being edited, if you'll recall, after yes. it was brought to um, to. Um, we had the public hearing with town council, and we encouraged everyone to give us their comments so that edits can be made. Staff has continued to edit it as well, and we have to re-publish um, it, so to speak, a minimum of 35 days before the Planning and Zoning Commission holds its public hearings to adopt the plan and consider and adopt. So um, that meet last week, the Plan of Conservation Development Committee meeting was canceled. And, you know, so some of you would have had a little bit of a transition to this meeting that now is our consultant giving you an update. And it's basically medium 16, which would have been last week's committee meeting um, tonight. So the consultant and Jim Mahoney and I are here to facilitate. Okay. Before it goes out to the town clerk for a minimum of 35 days, posting a minimum of 35 days before your public hearing, which we were hoping to have it in the middle of June. Aha, uh -huh. okay. All right, so everyone has received a copy of the plan. And I'm sorry that I could not make the. Um, without having a forum. So. I know, I'm sad. I'm, 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 There's a number of people. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. So has everyone had a chance to look? I mean, it's it's a large dark document, but has everyone had a chance to look at it? Um, I guess we're looking for sort of impressions or things that sort of hop out. Francisco's gonna have a little bit of okay. a presentation for you. All right, great. Well, and, the floor is yours. And can you all see my screen? Uh, yes. Okay, and today is May 4th, not April 27th. This presentation was originally crafted for our meeting last week. Okay. All right, um, so we have a, a very brief agenda this evening uh, for our purposes. And there it is, right? two items. Uh, to review recent revisions that we've made to the POCD document and and that being said, to hear any comments or, that, or questions that you might have, any direction that you could provide us, and then talk about our next steps in this process. So we have um, received comments from individuals uh, regarding the plan, and we filtered through some of those comments, and, and we've made a, a couple of very minor changes to the document as a result of comments received. And Jim and Maureen have reviewed the document and provided me with some feedback. So we've also made some very minor revisions just to get it more up to date, mostly with uh, some ongoing uh, changes uh, to some of the TED sites and, and some other items uh, to ensure the document is as up to date and accurate as possible. So we've made some of those changes. I just wanna walk you through those very quickly and then open it up to any comments uh, or um, request to revisions that you might have. So uh, first, we we modified the language of the economic development goal uh, a little bit uh, just to make sure it was consistent throughout the document. And this was direction that we got from uh, from finance department was to not only diversify the town's property base but expand it as well. So you see this item highlighted in, in yellow is, is what we added uh, to the language and that's consistent throughout the document now. Um, and, and so we, we also uh, added 
that within the text of the document, within that goal and within some of the supporting text. So on page six, page 14. Next, uh, our, at our prior, uh, at a prior meeting, we had, it was council meeting, we had some questions or concerns about the way that we describe water quality. Um, and basically what uh, some of the data that we presented from Connecticut Deep meant. So um, we expanded some of the language to make it clear exactly what those water quality classifications mean and how they're applied to Berlin's water bodies. So I hope that removes any confusion. Uh, this is a really important issue. Um, there are some deficiencies in water quality in some of the water bodies in Berlin. And I think it's very important to point those out because the plan makes a number of recommendations that if followed through would help improve water quality uh, in, the, in some of these uh, bodies of waters and supports your MS4 permit program. So I, I do think it's important to keep that information in the plan, but it was also important to make sure that we, we describe it so that it's clear exactly as, as to what that data from DEEP means. Uh, next, um, we just provided a little bit of clarity about the nursing jobs uh, that are um, in Berlin or tied to Berlin based upon uh, the data that we have. And with most of those, or a good portion of those being home health care employees of uh, home health care businesses located in a town. Um, because you do have a lot of nursing jobs, and the question might be well, where's we don't have a big hospital uh, or a lot of health care facilities? So, where, where are those nurses? And the answer is they're working for uh, employers located. Uh, out of Berlin and working in homes all over the region. We updated uh, Steel Center, of course, is, you know, things change from month to month and, and from year to year. And so we've updated uh, some of the description of the activity at that site to reflect uh, the development program as it currently stands. And, you know, all the text in blue are, are Jim's comments to me. Uh, about what needs to be updated. And so in, in the plan document itself, it, it just reads as normal text. Um, we also, apparently there's a, pro a project uh, that was denied as I understand, or not advanced. And so we removed reference to that at Ted's uh, site five. Um, additional description of uh, Steel Center, um, we, we updated this as well to, to be consistent with the development program. And it was also recommended that we identify the Berlin Visiting Nurse Association as um, a resource in the community and a town affiliated agency. So we have uh, found a very nice picture of them that's now in the plan and have a description of what they do and their importance in the community. Just, can I just pop in on that? Because yeah, please do. That, all right, Francesco, you were you were talking about the Nurses Association going back a couple of slides. Right here. Um, yep. Yeah, but you were saying that they don't just represent Berlin, but they go out oh, to oh, other... Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah, the nursing jobs. Let me go back to that. Yeah. So when in, in our economic development or our economic and market analysis for the town, um, the data that we have uh, from Census Bureau and other databases shows a lot of nursing jobs lo located out of Berlin. Okay. And um, uh, in fact, the skilled here it is right here in the text. Skilled nursing care facilities rank as the top industry sector in town, employing over 800 people, and encompassing 58% of healthcare jobs. So. I, I think there, this statistic may cause a little bit of confusion about where in the world could 800 nurses possibly be employed in Berlin, mm -hmm. right? You don't, you don't have a big hospital uh, or any hospital for that matter. Um, and the answer is that they are employed by nursing care companies that are located in Berlin 
that have nurses working all over the region. Does that make sense? Yeah, so in other words, it, okay, I just, it's just when we originally touched down on it when you were first giving um, the information, it, I had yeah. the impression that 809 nurses were all working in Berlin, taking care of all the seniors in Berlin. But right. then as you went further on, it you yeah. you spelled it out that they might be living here or they might be based out of this home office, but that doesn't right. necessarily mean they're working in Berlin. They're just, exactly. the home office is here, but yes. they're off in Rocky Hill or Newington or something like that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Or neighboring community. So, okay, all right. So we added some language to provide clarity of that, and it's occurring to me now that maybe there's actually a little bit more language we could add to, to be absolutely clear about what that means. Yeah, our concern was that people would just see in, in, our, in our description, in our charts of employment sectors and jobs in yeah. Berlin, they could see 800 nursing jobs and think to themselves, where, how could this data be accurate? Yeah. You know, where in the world are those nurses employed? So we're, we're yeah, trying to bring some clarity. <laughs> yeah. All uh, right. I, I, okay. I, I, might, I might actually add a sentence about them being employed, potentially employed in the region and outside of Berlin. Or, or just a sentence that they're home, they're, they're home based here. Yep. Yeah. Uh, no. No. I want well, to can I explain a little, Francisco? Yeah. yeah. So the we have several home care agencies that have their office in Berlin. So it's not yeah. just the V. You know, we're not talking VNA. We're talking the the different agencies like the yeah, American, American, the one on the Berlin Turnpike, Keep Me Home. All, right. There's yeah. all those agencies, and their offices are here. The nurses come here, get the you know do their lab, get their work, their and stuff, take off. But then they go out and serve people beyond the limits of Berlin. Okay. Their, All right. Their territory yes. is larger than Berlin, but they're, they're a bunch of different companies. They're not just, yeah, right. like he said, a single provider at a single hospital. Okay. Does that make more exactly. sense? Exactly. Yeah. I was watching from Tuesday. Yeah. All right. Okay. We're good on that. All right. So we, we've updated the document to explain that and I'll check it again just to make sure it's absolutely clear okay. about that. Okay. All right. So that is different than the nursing, uh, uh, the Visiting Nurses Association, which we have also included a description of them at, as a, a town resource. Okay. And then it was also recommended that we add um, a couple of properties to our list of historically significant properties. So we've added the uh, Blair factory site and the Bandbox School. All right. I, hate to sound, I hate to sound ignorant, but we added what? Are, are you familiar with either the Blair factory site or the Bandbox school? No, I'll be, I'm going to be honest with you. Where do you, we, do we know where you, they are? You sound very honest. <laughs> by, down by St. Paul's on Main Street. It's where the old museum used to be, but it's, it's not a library. The, you mean the Peck Memorial Library, the original one? The old library. Okay. All right. So that's that used to be a school. And then what's the other one that we're adding? I'm sorry. The, the Blair Factory site, and that's Blair B L A I R. All right. And I'm confused. Anyone know where the Blair Factory site is? Where would Tim? Do you know where the Blair, Blair factory site is? Is that where the Pistol Creek, where the original um, factory was for making gun parts? Pistol Creek. No, oh, we do have Pistol Creek site listed separately. All right, Tim Zygmunt, do you know where the Blair factory site was? Yeah, I think it was in East Berlin, actually the lot next door to my house. <laughs> <laughs> So he might know. The factory there. <laughs> are you on an historic this? Are you on an historic property? <laughs> no, I, I, well, the is there a building there? Yeah, actually, part of my property was a historical. There was a historical site there. Yes, that burnt down. Actually, there was two buildings there that burnt down. One I think was this factory. Did you? It was, it's, okay, where 
<laughs> trying to search. It was called Blair Manufacturing. Yeah. They manufactured, I think uh, they manufactured uh, uh, parachutes uh, during the war. Oh. Huh. Do you have one of your historic friends on the, can you, can you text them? I and think that's it, but I don't know. Jim Mahoney? I don't know if Jim Mahoney would know. Lorraine, I don't Lorraine know. Stump. I think we, we, we must, we must have gotten the information from Lorraine. So we were, we're we did. Yes. We did. Okay. Oh, so <laughs> Lorraine's the one who forwarded the information, Lorraine that Stump? Is, that is yes. correct. Okay. All right. Well, she said it was there, then that's what it was. Oh, but, it's there. If she, if right. that, that's what she okay. said just there. All right. Well, thank you for that. I'm sorry okay. to, to stop your no, presentation. No trouble. Just, no, okay. Now's, now's the time to get it right. All um, right. I See, I, I miss talking with you. So. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. Go on. I all right. Want... So it was just those two items. On, all right. We also added one farm to our list, Fontanella Farm on Chamberlain Highway. And in that, uh, uh, presumably I got the location right on the map as well, is located between Chamberlain Growers and the Bostrom Tree Farm. Okay, and which farm is that that we're adding? Fontanella. Oh, fine. okay, Fontanella, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, terrific, thank you. We did not Fontanella. previously have them on, on our list or map, so we added that. Fontanella is immediately south of the H2O farms. They were the ones with the- uh, Apple Lane. Yeah, they have Apple Lane. I hope they, they goes save that the building. building. I like that building. That used to, they used to sell all of their vegetables there and stuff. Um, the, and I do wanna just comment that, and I believe it was distributed at one of your meetings that Mrs. Fontanella um, provided the commission with um, why she wanted the they should be on the list uh, okay as far as what their farm does oh yeah so that's part of the pocd record all right well. that's that's fine i'm happy to have the farms we did find okay. it actually on a very old map on in trying to figure out the location because the roads aren't so uh, uh, yeah <laughs> All right, we're, we're good with that? Yep. Very good. Next, uh, and this is on our future land use plan. And you'll, you'll remember for a couple of meetings in a row, we had a discussion about the office technology zone. And we had <laughs> called it by the same name, those areas on the uh, future land use map. And we have, uh, change that to corporate office instead. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. To make it more focused on office type uses. And to, we, we also, I, as you remember, I had concerns about using a future land use category that shared the exact same name as a zoning district because it might cause confusion between the two different maps and their purposes. So we have changed that to corporate office on the map and plan. Okay. okay. That will work. And we have also added, and this is on page 115, a recommendation that the town council establish a POCD implementation committee that would include membership from key boards and commissions um, that would meet quarterly to insist, uh, to assist PNC to oversee implementation of the plan. So you may recall in previous plans, there was an implementation committee. The 2013 plan did not end up with an implementation committee. The 2003 plan had one. And it was um, because as you go into the implementation, you see that there are um, certain boards or commissions or departments that are charged with or, or the key player to get something done that's in the plan. So it brings all those people together and to stay on track to actually be moving forward with the plan over the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. 
So would the implementation committee um, be an advisory committee to planning and zoning, or would they be more a directive? There are, there, they would be a committee that the town council sets up mm -hmm. to, um, to um, move the plan forward that was adopted by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, who sees what first, or do they become reactionary to planning and so I'm just trying to figure out the pecking order here. Um, so if you have an implementation committee, do they just watch to see what we're doing to make no, sure? They're, they're, they're more actively working to get it done. Um, Francisco, do you have a page of the implementation you could bring up? I'm just confused on how. Perhaps, or is that too difficult? Um, no, no, I can, let me, let me bring, open the plan and I'll just have to switch over to that window, but it just take a, a second. And I think. Yeah, no, yeah, take your time. Sense if you see the page it, where um, commit the, the EOCD has a goal, as was just stated, mm -hmm. and that goal is the lead on that goal is conservation commission to, you know, seek to connect this trail to this area, this area of open space to another area of open space. And they're working then the next, you know, maybe it's not at the highest priority, but it's a mid priority. So in three or four years, they're still realizing it's something to do and they work on how are we gonna get this done? The committee members. Go ahead. The, the, the commission override anything that No, it would be it would be to implement these goals. And so, and can you see the table now? I can I can see it. Is if that you zoom in on a line? It would. Yeah, let me, let me. Is zoom there a in. specific page that that's on? Because I can. Yeah, it starts. It's in section nine, and it starts uh -huh. around page one eighteen. About 118. Okay. All right. I think I was just there. Okay. Almost there. I was almost uh, there. Sorry. The, the section okay, starts there. around 115, 116, and, and the page I'm on is, is 118. Okay. So 118. All right. I have it. Okay. So this summary takes all of the recommendations of the plan, condenses them all into a table, and that within the table, we identify the lead. On, on some of the, on the plan's recommendations, uh, the specific actions, who's lead it and, and what, who uh, is the partner and, and what the priority level is. So an implementation committee would really be tasked with going through this list and focusing particularly on high priority items and coordinating and ensuring that B and Z that you're working on these items and you have the resources you need, uh, both the commission and, and departmentally, and also coordinating with whoever partners should be uh, in the room. And so that's part of the idea of having different members from various boards and commissions sitting on the committee is that they have an open line of communication with various boards and commissions across the town. Okay. Uh, so Brian. then they would be more of an, uh, they basically be keeping track and advising on, you know, so, how to go about accomplishing goals. Yeah. And if you look at, say, the second item where review the town's land use regulations, including zoning regulations, okay, those are the regulations that this commission amends. Mm -hmm. But then you have, you know, further in the lit, you have floodplain, subdivision, and inland wetland regulations. Inland wetlands, is the one that amends their own reg the inland wetlands regulations. So they would be the one that, that takes charge of amending their regulations and then in, in, um, in accordance with keeping up with environmental issues, et cetera. Council. Conservation. What's TM? Town manager. Town manager. Town manager. Town manager. Town manager? You scroll down just a oh. little bit. Most of them are looking at. A so they'd be advising. They'd be advising all the different commissions and everything. Yes. On how to achieve the goals. 
but for instance, but mostly the, the the grants, yeah, staff, yeah, to write the grants and goes through town council, uh, staff from multiple departments. But I will credit Tim Mahoney with doing a lot of those, yeah, and but Thank it goes you, through the town manager's office and then to town council to get permission to apply for the grant. don't come to us to the planning yeah. zoning commission and through our office so that. so would the advisory commission then be proactive to a certain extent so again and and um i don't want to kind of jump in because i haven't been going to all these meetings but it's it's a committee so it's not it, it doesn't serve the purpose um or should it ever serve the purpose of usurping your statutory authority oh. Uh, yeah, I understand that. Re really, it's it's to gauge that whether or not there's been progress made. Up. I think that's the purpose, right? Is there progress being made towards the goals? Yeah. You know, what what goal? I mean, they would have input. You know, they would be specifically, I think, looking at. You know, are the strategies being implemented? Are the strategies suitable to meet the goals? Because as you embark upon these different strategies you know, there may be tweaking that's necessary and so forth in order to accomplish the goals. So it's not it's not really any different than what, um, for example, uh, I'm gonna just use the affordable housing mm -hmm. uh, committee because that was an advisory committee. Yeah. And ultimately they're not decision makers, just as Maureen pointed out, of course, you know, you as, as, as the entity with, as the land use agency with statutory authority, to uh, develop the regulations and amend the regulations, you are the ultimate decision maker. Mm -hmm. So, so more, it's just the purpose that they serve, and and it can, you know, and it really is ultimately town council who apply, who who would be giving them, you know, the authority in terms of the scope of what they would be doing. Yeah. Um. Because we know that about committees, right? Yeah. Um. So ultimately, but that I think is what's envisioned. Yeah. Of course. So. Well, I was happy to see that. Um, let me just flip back here. That um, I said, I guess it was an item eight, would be pursue state grants for the acquisition of open space. And I know that goes conservation commission and the town manager. And I know that that Jim Mahoney does a lot of the grant work, or you seem to have a, a real feel for what's out there. And I, I'm thrilled that that's part of it because there's so many opportunities for the town to buy beautiful open space that's usable by the town. Um, and it's not gonna break the bank either, so to speak. I mean, the prices are almost like to the point where I feel like personally writing a check and buying it just to get it off, you know? The, uh, so I, 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 I'm, I, that's very encouraging and I'm glad because I think we, we have to strike that balance between housing, commercial, and open space. And I don't want open space to go away. I'm gonna fight for it. <laughs> I think, anyway, I think, all right, so uh, I'm very happy this, about that. Yeah. This implementation plan, I think, you know, it did come up as a, uh, as a comment at the council meeting uh, how are we going to make, you know, we have a lot of recommendations. You have a lot of recommendations in this plan. How are we going to get it implemented? And, mm -hmm. you know, of course, we always hear about plans that go on the shelf. And the implementation committee is really a way to make sure that it doesn't go on the shelf and that people are really paying attention on a continuous basis to the plan and trying to implement the, the ideas that, that have been put forward. Uh, I agree. Too many times it's put away. And we forget about it, and uh, and then we'll have something come before us, and you know, and and we're kind of searching for a direction, and it's right in front of us, but out of sight, out of mind, right? You know, I guess. Anyway, but yeah, I'm glad that that's in there. All right. Okay. Anything else? Anyone else have any comments? To you guys. Is that the end of the adjustments that we have, Francisco? Yeah, we're, uh, I think, very near the end. Um, let, let me go back to the presentation.
right. Yes, that that was the the last item. The last one. Okay. Now let so let let's go on. Hold on to... one second. Okay. There we go. It wasn't showing up properly. Oh, okay. Right. So now what remains? Well, um, we are still awaiting uh, any comments from both council and Prague, and and Maureen, have we heard anything at all from either body? I do not believe so. Okay. Um, as, as a reminder, they are advisory to you, and ultimately, uh, you have the authority to adopt the plan as you see fit. Uh, we. We, we are compelled to give them an opportunity to provide comment. We ideally, we want council to adopt, to endorse the plan. We want their full support and we'd like to include or be able to respond to any comments they have. But um, council's failure to provide you with comments does not prevent you from bringing the plan to a public hearing for adoption. Okay. And Krog can wait until the public hearing to provide comment. They could send a staff person to the public hearing along with the rest of the public to provide comment on the plan. Bullet point three. You know, uh, let me just ask you, and Maureen, maybe you can chime in on this one too. Under current work, the last bullet point is begin zoning work, affordable housing plan recommendations, and BTD reviews. All right. So it's part of their. The, the contract when you when the um, commission decides to move forward with the consultant, the review of our zoning regulation mm -hmm. was wrapped into so, okay certain portions of the zoning regulations, a limited scope, you know, it was limited because that's the focus was the POCD, but with this zoning work of the areas um, that have been of concern. And again, that was cited in the moratoriums that the, that moratorium, the Bunty family moratorium, yeah. for instance, that our consultant was charged with looking into the regulations. Okay. All righty. And so um, if I wanted to comment, say, on the affordable housing or the BTD review. I could base that input on the current zoning regulations and this, or if I wanted to look at it and review it just to sort of uh, freshen. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not really understanding. All right. Yeah, well, let, maybe let, I let me don't take have a, any let me, they are. Maybe, let me know. take a stab at that if I could. Okay, and, yeah, and, please. And you folks are, I'm, I'm going to start animating these slides to show one bullet at a time because you're jumping ahead of me. <laughs> Oh, no, I didn't mean to jump. I just didn't want you to jump off of this slide. Yeah. Because I um, caught it and I thought, well, BTD review. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let, let me let me give you a primer. And and for last week's meeting, when we had the full uh, meeting available to us and you didn't have an agenda packed with other things, too, we had planned on uh, getting started with this and, okay. and giving you a kind of introduction as to what it is that we're taking on and what it is we need to accomplish. And it, it's not a huge scope of work. Uh, as Maureen mentioned, it's part of our contract, part of our scope of work, but we have been tasked with reviewing uh, your zoning regulations and specifically uh, the Berlin Turnpike District zoning regulations to make any updates that might be necessary to best serve the town. Um, given your experience with those regs over the past couple of years, to afford you an opportunity uh, to weigh in on how you think those could or should be changed, if at all, and to prepare specific recommendations for amending those regulations as needed. And in addition to that, we've been tasked with taking the zoning recommendations of the affordable housing plan, um, and it made multiple zoning recommendations and uh, further exploring those recommendations to see if they're feasible, if they would be beneficial and supportive of creating affordable housing. And if so, um, how exactly should the zoning regulations be changed? 
And so we would make uh, specific recommendations for amendments to the zoning regulations um, for your consideration. And this, this would be done, this work effort is separate from the POCD. It's a, independent of, in many ways of the POCD. So it's not tied to our POCD process and our public hearing, and it's not gonna be in the POCD document. Um, it will likely be one or, one or two memorandums from us, reports with recommendations that you could consider for making uh, amendments to your zoning regulations at some future point, whether it's this summer or in the fall or whenever it, it is, you, you have the bandwidth to take that on. Okay. okay. And we are gonna walk you through that process. And um, I expect we'll be able to use our next meeting to get started with that. We've done a lot of work to date in terms of reviewing uh, the zoning regulations and making some very, pointing out some opportunities for amendments that might help support affordable housing. Um, and we, we think might be, you know, uh, is would be consistent with the POCD and would be uh, a good fit for the town. So we're, we'll walk you through those in the next meeting. If it takes takes a couple of meetings to, to get it done, that's fine. If we have to go uh, past June, I, I think we expect it wouldn't take more than a couple of months to do this work, um, but it, it'd take a little while to walk you through it. Um, uh, but in terms of the actual work, we've done a good part of the review. And it's in a matter of getting you on board, walking you through it, and, and getting your feedback and input into the process. Okay. okay. All right. All right. So that's it's separate task. I don't want to conflate that with our POCD schedule here. All right. Okay. So with so, respect to the POCD. I, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, sorry, Francesca. It's hard for you to see that I'm trying to um, no I can't see anyone you're, so, you're that big. <laughs> I'm um just for the commission to understand and make sure I'm that we're all following um the, the memorandum you referred to on the BTD was was drafted was not drafted and because it wasn't given right but it was going to be presented at the meeting but then they didn't get it. We've we prepared a draft memorandum of um, potential or of opportunities and ideas for amendments uh, to the zoning regulations to support affordable housing. It's a work in progress, and and that is just kind of a working memorandum. It's not anything final. What we want to do with you is walk you through those ideas one by one and get your input into the process so that we could finalize our recommendations. Um, and that will be a report or a document that you can then, you know, uh, work on, you know, you can implement some of it, all of it, none of it. Uh, it's, it, it, but it would complete our work uh, with respect to the zoning review and recommendations. Okay, but that would be separate from the POCD, correct? Yeah, it's it's all under all one right. contract. It, it definitely builds upon the recommendations of both yes. the POCD and the affordable housing plan, but none of this content is going directly into the POCD. You know, the POCD okay. does make a lot of recommendations specific to the Berlin Turnpike and um, to housing and affordable housing, as does obviously the affordable housing plan. Uh, so it's really, it, it's almost like we're immediately following through on the POCD's recommendations. And this is almost the first item that we're getting started with. And, okay. and this is one of the first items uh, coming out of the affordable housing plan that it recommended that we're, we're working on. So we're, th this, is, this represents those two plans being set in motion. Okay. And when is our next meeting for the POCD, or do we have another meeting? Once again, a slide ahead of me. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, shoot. Okay. All right, go. <laughs> no problem. All right. So let, let, let me talk about our, our timeline. Yeah, go ahead. You talk about uh, what you For the POCD. 
So if we are to keep a June public hearing, and right now we're holding June 15 as a potential public hearing date, uh, we need to file the draft plan with the town clerk by May 11, and that's for public review. You know, a hard copy is filed, it's posted on a town website. Now, if, if for some reason we do get some comment from either CROG or council following that posting, we can uh, then bring that those comments to the public hearing, um, discuss them and agree upon, uh, you can then have the option if the comments are minor to adopt the plan with those changes being made. And then we make the changes and then we file the plan with the state. Um, if if there's anything major that comes, anything from town council that that is really wants to take the plan or its recommendations in a very different direction, then we need to regroup and pull back. Okay, which so you can also you can always um, re, you know delay or reschedule a public hearing for a couple weeks later, month later, uh, whatever is needed, so that um, in that event, if we need to make any real substantive changes to the plan, we should then uh, make those changes and then file that revised draft with the town clerk. And that would then start a 35 day process again and push things out. We're hoping that we're not gonna, um, I don't expect CROG may have a bunch of minor recommendations, but they're not gonna change your your policy because that are, we recommend because we, reviewed the plan for consistency with the state and regional plans and Berlin wasn't in in, in the Krog region in their pro, when their prior plan was conducted. So there's there's nothing directly relevant. So I, I don't expect any big changes from them. And, and I do expect council is going to support this plan, but we, we are eager to see their comments. All right. So those those the key dates right now is May 11th to file with town clerk and, and for public review. And then, uh, which enables us to hold a hearing on June 15th. Okay. Right. And, Thank you. and then we expect that in June, assuming we can have productive meeting uh, in a couple of weeks in May, and then another one in June, we might be able to wrap up our zoning work by June, which concludes our, our contract and our work on the project. All right. So, next, so here's what this schedule looks like, right? We're we're already well in motion. We're about halfway into this adoption approval process. Uh, so we, we submitted to council and CROG uh, about 30 days ago or so. Um, and we're approaching May 11th, right? We're a week away, in fact. And uh, so we need to uh, file with town clerk, post it to the website. Uh, and then that brings us to public hearing. You have to do all your usual notices for public hearing. And then after adoption, we submit it to OPM. And that's the process. Now, um, in the big scale of things, we're getting very close to the end. We, we've extended this a couple of times, but we're almost there. And here you see we're in the middle of the adoption process and we're, we're, under, we're now getting off the ground with the zoning review. Um, my myself and my team have been working with Jim and Maureen on it, um, but we got have to get you plugged into it. Now, so when is our next meeting? Um, did, did someone ask that question already? Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it is scheduled or following our regular schedule. It would be Thursday, May twenty fifth at five thirty. Okay, hold on. And I'm hoping that works for everyone. All right. I don't may. Would anybody be open to moving that later in the day, maybe 6 30? And that that's fine for me too. So as we had, we had had them later um during the warmer weather months, and then we moved them earlier when we went through into the winter and the early sunsets. And um I think it's not unexpected. We're probably going to be making them a later meeting again. Okay. But so six thirty 
two committee members that are here can probably <laughs> Can we right, try so to agree on that now? Six or yeah. six thirty? I think yeah. I could do six thirty. Yeah, we'll we'll let let's make it six thirty. Um, are the meetings are open to the public? They are absolutely open to the public. They're on Zoom. They're Recorded and you want to come, you can come and participate. You're come. Yeah. And I get that inquiry. I've, I've told a number of people they can come. We've had a couple of people come, but most, yeah, there's, there's few meetings that under special circumstances, such as your executive sessions, where the public is not um able to participate even though those or meetings not, or not those meetings attend, yeah. are able to attend those meetings are public but then that sect portion of it is not public mm -hmm. so I, I expect that our agenda out. for this next meeting will be to hopefully discuss any comments received from Prague and council and um and to dive right into the, the zoning work that i discussed okay that'd be great okay so i, I expect it'll be a very full meeting we have a lot lot to cover on the zoning front yeah okay anyone right, that else? concludes my presentation all righty uh, thank you uh, anyone else have any questions or comments all right maureen anything not with regard no all right. Leave. Good deal. I think you guys are doing some good yeah. work. And um, Tim, did you have something to say? Okay. All right. So we'll see you on the 25th. Excellent. Okay. And thank you. Good night, Jim. everyone. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Is good night. Jim hanging out? Or no, Jim's going good night too. He says, oh, hallelujah. I'm out so, here. So we, the three of us, Jim, Francisco, and I always have a Pre meeting, 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 meeting. This one we had before the committee meeting, but each week, so that okay, we'll leave it up to Francesco to do the talking. All righty, that's all right. But uh, if you do have a chance to and you want to participate, even if this you want to jump in this late in the game, I mean, that's that's fine. Um, we do know the, what, we, what we will be talking about, especially as far as rewriting the zoning regulations. So if you have any thoughts or whatever, uh, forward them or please attend the meeting. They are welcome to you. Okay. All right. So we can move on to the next, I guess, item on the agenda, which is the public hearings. So, no, no, yeah. no. So you actually added. Oh yeah, yeah. We added something. We added this. Um, I think. Yeah. We'll adjust this right now because. Oh, okay. You don't mind? No. Uh, By all means. So uh, with regard to the matter that was added for uh, the applications that have been submitted on behalf of 1906 Berlin Turnpike LLC, um, the reason why I stepped out of the room earlier is I had been waiting for, for counsel um, for the property owner to call me back because um, I was trying to get a hold of them today after speaking to your planner. Um, so I did step out and have a conversation with him and that is uh, attorney Chris Smith. Um, and he has requested uh, that that I request of you that you wait until your next meeting, which is two weeks from today, correct? Yeah. So the, so the 18th, 18th um, that you wait until the 18th to consider whether or not to receive these applications, uh, because he's aware of the fact that there is a moratorium that's in place on multifamily housing. He wants to be able to submit something for your consideration before you make the decision about whether or not to receive the application. So um, if this matter could simply go over until uh, May 18th, um, then he will get something in again so that that way he can address the issue. Of the of essentially the applicability of the moratorium to the applications that have been submitted. Okay. When is our moratorium? Because I know that we purposely made it so that we could try to do this POCD stuff and try to get everything. What's what's that is in your um the package we provided. Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That it goes to August eleventh. August eleventh, twenty twenty-three. 
that's what that legal notice that's in front of you oh. um, is telling you from February 2nd. Thank you. you. Uh, voted to it for the extension of the moratorium on multifamily August. development to August 11, 2023. Okay, wait a minute. So this page right here, the yes. legal yeah. notice page. Yes. The moratorium was extended. The pages behind it were we we accidentally the moratorium words are the same. We we copied the wrong, okay. wrong version. So we put the legal ad on top of it. To oh, okay. show you that you extended this moratorium, you then extended, we just copied the. So this one's correct. We printed out the wrong one. Okay, okay. That makes right. a lot more and sense. I'm sorry the for that. The previous one. We printed out the yeah. previous. I got so excited about the POCD that I misplaced my paperwork. So my, that, that that's on me. Okay, so. Right, so bad. But um, Brian kept it. okay. So that's on until the end of the middle august right now council would you agree with that decision then to... i think that that's fine yes give him absolutely the opportunity uh to submit what he'd like to submit for your consideration but all right just let me play the devil's advocate if we've got a moratorium on stuff why would we be even looking at any of that i mean well, these these are 830 g these would be considered 830 g applications yeah so yes he would like the opportunity to address the moratorium in that context. So he'll submit something for your consideration. So you are con continuing consideration of whether or not to receive the applications okay. at the request of counsel, Chris Smith. Okay. I will, I will make the motion uh, to continue this commission business of consideration of these two items until our next meeting on May 18th. May 18th. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second by Mr. Dykin. Okay. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? So moved. All righty. And now we move on to the public hearing. So the first item is the proposed amendment of the planning and zoning staff to the Berlin regulations for section 11 DD, planned residential infill development. All right. So we've had this for a little bit of time, and I think what it really comes down to is um, as we looked at it, um, we were trying to figure out how many homes per acre. And I think we floated somewhere between four and six, and then we started talking about four and five. Um, and I think that's where we left it because everyone sort of got stuck in the, in the mud, so to, so to speak. So that's where we are right now. And I know Tim and I were doing battle about yes. that. Okay. <laughs> so Maureen, I know you said you had some comments that you'd like so, to make. So let's have it out have the whatever. The um I wanted to be a little more organized with my comments. But um, my recollection is that the last discussion, as um, Chairman Veely just noted, was something that balanced closer to the 11,000 square feet, 10,000, 11,000 square feet per unit. And um, I just want to express the planning concern that that um, the modifying the ex existing regulations um, that restrictively. Um, with restrictive dent densities may result in a regulation that's not actually an incentive and an economic opportunity to redevelop those sites, those motel sites. The purpose of the regulation was to um, have another housing choice and create an opportunity um, that, that redevelops motel sites into small concise homes we have a lot of our 11 zoning and, and that's what 11,000 square feet would be it would be pretty you know open as far as um and it's with what we have in a single family zone it's not even the two family zone and um so i would encourage you to consider um a density that's more in line with our seven zoning or our seven two family zoning, which is which balances out to approximately five thousand square feet um, per unit, um, 
and I was trying to do an analysis and my, every time I start to do the math and the analysis, I seem to get um, waylaid by something else coming in <laughs> or some other issues, but was trying to approximate to something like the new birch, which is on the south end of the Berlin Turnpike, the development that backs into um, Silver Lake, um, near Klopaki's new project, you know where I'm talking about, it's a bunch of 18 units. There's 18 units there, and that's on 2.82 acres. And these are approximate acreage because I had to do them on the map myself. Um, they are attached units, um, but, you know, and that those are, would average out the plot of land L's up, if you zoom out a little bit. You'll see, when you kind of do a outline of the property with your person, see how it goes up with that little patch back there. So that really isn't part of the openness of the site, I wouldn't say around the units. Um, but even with that, it's around 6,800 square feet per unit. And I'm sorry, you, at least, right, for the lot size, you know, if the lot, was divided by 20, by the 18 units, it would be 6,800. And, and the discussion, so I'm, we're switching um, um, formulas because you, you, the comments you just made were about um, how many units per acre, but the converse, uh, previously we had conversations of square feet per unit. So my calculations are in the square feet per unit. I'd have to trans, I'd have to, um, yeah, um, convert them if I went. So just understand, I'm talking square feet per unit. Yeah, I. Of the lot. I would. And that's around 6,800. If you take that L off, which I did just by a measurement, it's 5,700. Okay. So it just, I'm showing somewhat the density. Um, Sunny Ledge is around 6,500. That's on the on New Britain Road. And I did some others as well, but. It would be easier for me to like, you know, imagine and picture if it's set by acre. Okay, I have a table and I was trying, that okay. was not complete. And I was working on, so I just pulled a few of them. Um, and Marjorie Moore back here is 4,350. Uh, uh, can I make a comment, Tim? Sure you Hello. can. Yes. Okay. Well, all of a sudden, uh, we looked in. We're looking at multifamily condo units, whatever. Uh, there, that's not what the scope of the the thing was. It was single family residential. Uh, so that's where the R seven came in effect. Uh, but there needed to be a potential of a developer doing it basically uh with our 11 type situation there's no potential to to do it so it's 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 a it's an, a mute thing to even do the overlay zone uh because there's no potential to get it done uh to do the Thing that it, the overlay zone was designed to do was to uh, give a little incentive for those, these older motels uh, to be redeveloped uh, and brought up to today's standards, basically. Uh, and that incentive is not there at our 11 zone. Uh, you know, and if it goes down to the R7 zone, I could see the potential being there. Uh, and the number of units put in there are not a large amount of units. Uh, but uh, it's nothing different than uh, Mattabasa Street, Kensington, R7 zone. Uh, 
So, you know, that's uh that's what we're looking to. The only thing, the only thing was different in the R7 zone. R7 allowed two family houses, I think. And and we would go basically take it out to single family residential. So I think that that's if I'm correct, Maureen. Is that the way we we Hello? The la the just the end of your sentence I missed. I said I said originally that it was supposed to be single family residential, and the only thing out of the uh, R7 zone, we were taking out uh, two family homes to uh, put it as single family residential. Right. So single family was, or rather, single unit buildings were the direction that you also gave. That, 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 that's right. Yeah. Um, yes. Another, if I, um, and so our seven zoning, which is 7,500 unit uh, square feet per unit is required, um, calculates backwards to, or the other way, to 5.8 units per acre. So that's at 5.86 units per acre is about what yeah. our seven zone is. Just yeah. So we're talking the same calculation. Yeah, that helps. That's what I've been trying to convert them. Um, and I initially had brought to your attention that where we allow two families in our sevens is at 5,000 square feet. So that adds, you know, another couple of units per eight. So we're still kind of in that area that we've been See, between the five back. and the seven. At the last meeting, I heard more of the direction going upwards towards the 11,000. Well, and that, 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 and, that and that made me very concerned that the regulation was not going to be um, be usable. It wouldn't be mm -hmm. the, an economic point that we would have the incentive for the um, motel sites to be redeveloped. Yeah. And may not be in line with adding a housing choice. Um, I also wanted to clarify a little bit of confusion that I heard from that meeting. Or that I was yeah. thinking people might have had at that meeting, um, because because of the comparison to the our single and two family zones, which are where you would have a subdivision. So just keep in mind that this is a regulation for a multifamily development. They're freestanding units, but it's still a multifamily. So whether it's apartments or condos, you know, whether it's rental or ownership, it's still a one piece of property with one owner of the property. The own, the, the person occupying the unit would not own a yeah. small parcel. It would <laughs> have a small parcel or that uh, an equivalent amount of square footage associated with their, with the, with the density, with the density. You know, it could all be common land that's completely used. They could get what we generally refer to as an exclusive use area around their unit that they could have their own little garden, or sometimes you don't have that. It's all community land except for the footprint of your of your unit. Yeah. But, so I just wanted to keep in mind it wasn't a subdivision. The road is doesn't Yeah, exactly. Road. This is a yeah. um a revitalization family that instead of being a high rise of Berlin three stories, you know, it's still high enough for me. Rise with interior <laughs> hallways or exterior yeah. hallways, and you go into the units. These are units you access from the outside, from the ground level. Individual units, but they are a multi-family property. I just want that. It just felt like a subdivision, and the terminology. <laughs> might have been misunderstood well i think you got a little especially yeah. with the um with the amount of new membership yeah and i i think that's one thing that tim and i sort of debated because we were talking i was talking about rental and like and tim did bring up an interesting point where he said well why couldn't somebody do it like have the units uh refurbished or whatever or you know reapplied but perhaps they would want to sell the condo. So you have like a homeowner's association fee where the person would actually buy the unit 
and own the unit, but not own the land like a like a condo, even though there might only be five or six units involved in that little revitalization, that they would have that option to do that because home ownership is always preferred over rental if you can do it. But yeah. so and that's that's my that's my conclusion is that we don't want to encourage the rental part of it. You want it as the single family residential homes. You can rent your home or one owner can own them all and rent rent the homes or uh, they could be sold individually uh, to, to individual homeowners uh, like like Maureen said with a land uses area or they can be a R7 zone subdivision well, I, I a lot of lines with single family homes on them. I think that you'd have a problem with the R7. I think that you would have to give it just a revitalization with an option to the owner of the property or the development would decide whether or not to rent or to sell the unit. But now you're talking about rezoning and now you're talking, I don't know, I'd, I'd like to stay away from that. I think it muddies the water too much, especially if you have the option for renting or buying the unit. Also, I, as I understand I, from what Maureen was just saying is that a subdivision does not fit into this regulation. Yeah. It's the whole parcel we're considering when we're looking at this. Yeah, because we're basing it, we're trying to help the people who have these units that are disarray to revitalize them. So we don't want to, now all of a sudden you're going to get involved with an R7 subdivision. Now you're you're cutting up that little parcel and it's it's never going to make it. No, you're still coming up with the same number of homes. Okay. R7 development, you're coming up with the same number of homes. I just say using the portion of R7 division, I uh, think the numbers basically. 7,000 square foot lots oh, uh, and, and a home beyond that lot. Now that's, that could be a land uses lot or it can be a regular subdivision lot. The number single family homes are not gonna change because the land is only gonna develop how many homes can develop on those lots. So, and the option is the homeowner written a lot, a written a home or owning the home. That's the, that's the option. Uh, it's the option to the developer to have a association that all the homes are in the same association. Okay. Uh, you know, or it could be single family homes owning a lot. The land, uh, there is the options there to do everything basically. Rentals, they could do the options and rentals with a seven thousand square foot land uses uh, option. Single family homes with the owned seven thousand square foot lots or rental development. The all the all the all the options are there, and it gives the potential oh. for a market to be for that property. Uh, um. If you restrict it, oh. you, you're, the potential is not there, and you might as well not do this. This well, I, I think Maureen has a comment on that. So what I was getting. And this is the 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 thing that was confusing me with regard writing from the last meeting is the mechanism for which to develop a regulation that's a subdivision that divides the property mm -hmm. into several and separate and distinct yeah. parcels is subdivision of land, which is a different charge of the commission and a, a different mechanism. Yeah. Um, we pulled up just right now Hatchery Brook Homes which is on Four Rod Road. It's the, the it's a multi-family, yes. but they're freestanding units as far as I'm aware. Um, it's on Four Rod, just south of Patterson Way. 
is that what comes through there? Yeah, it's over by Lori, Lori Ann, uh, yeah. Lori Ann. Yeah, it's I'm almost, sorry, yeah. almost sorry, a camel a on the way to Camel's Back. It's behind an industry. Up front is an industry building. Yes, yeah, yes. exactly. Okay. So that is, can you click on it? So it highlights in yellow. It's one piece of property, but they're individually owned. owned. Yes. And- and yeah, they're, they're, I mean, they're more, less units per acre because they have all that open land surrounding them um, the, on the outskirts, which none of the motel properties have land yeah. of that nature where they could have that kind of um, area around them. And that, I believe, has a, quite a bit of wetlands on it as well. Yeah. But that's where you have individual units and individually owned, but not a subdivided parcel it's the yeah. terminology and the mechanism of subdivision versus multifamily that you want to make clear to the community yeah. if you know if i could wrap my head around subdivision regs that could fit onto hotel parcels i just can't yeah, I that mechanism and and working that out we could put our energy into doing that if that's what's desired but that's no, I, I don't I, think where the intent of modifying the planned infill regulations that are in place, um, I, I don't think that's the yeah. intent. It was to create yet another type of housing option. Beckley Farms also has freestanding mm -hmm. units, but that whole entire five phase project is on one piece of property. It's a multifamily yeah. development. It's yeah. not single family subdivided homes, um, Silver Ridge, yep. same way, Silver Island. Well, and I think way. that's what we're trying those to do. Different. I think that's what we're trying to do. We're just, we're yeah, trying to those encourage are much them. Higher end as far yeah. as that goes, but this seemed to be a pretty easy and yeah. packed example to provide. Well, I mean, uh, well, okay, commissioners. <laughs> Any, anyone else, Brian? Yeah, what I'm looking at right now seems to be, you know, the direction that I think we should go in with this regulation. Um, I just guess it really comes down to uh, what density we all can agree on. Well, I think, you know, I'm, I'm open to the idea of between the, the five and what did we say, the, the five and seven or something? Mm -hmm. Especially because we're we're looking at samples, you know that it's limited because we're only dealing with the existing motel properties that we have and offering them a choice or a chance to revitalize them, to make them a better investment, and to make it prettier locations on the Berlin Turnpike. So, I I think that's what the intent is. So, I mean, I would I would. I would go between the five and the seven. I'd be happy I splitting the difference at six. Six. So I'd be that's six directly units. in line with the R seven. Yeah. Yeah. That's six Breaker, units. Breaker, yeah. Andre any agree? John? Okay. All right. So we're looking at six per acre. Okay. Yeah, I'll continue with the the modifications okay excellent and to show what that relates to on those parcels which i think we have i think that's on those sheets i handed out yeah i still have them <laughs> that's all right yeah. well that's okay that's okay we'll get it next time all right so yeah, is that it well if if all goes well in the next few weeks we'll repackage together and mm -hmm. make sure that all the commission members have this same information going into the calling this hopefully to the close of the public hearing on this all right so do we do we want to keep the public hearing open or do we want yeah, to you I, I would suggest that you do so so that we can make those okay additional modifications to the regulation Alrighty. and um, and then include that in the discussion. All right, you're good with that, Tim. I think we're. And you do have someone oh. online. <clears throat> All right, is there anyone from the public who wishes to address the commission regarding this issue? Now would be the time to let us know how you feel, either for or against it. All right, hearing none. 
I'll make the motion to continue until our May 18th meeting. Okay, motion to continue uh, by Commissioner Rogan, the second by Ms. Miller. Further discussion? Then all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Tim? Aye. Okay, those opposed, so move. Still not, still not in agreement, but. <laughs> well, we're still in public we'll hearing get, though. We'll get the deal, you know, we'll get the <clears throat> No, we're still in public hearing. All righty, moving on. Um, then we have the applicant who asked that we continue this without opening or testimony or anything else like that was that that zone change application. So we don't, do we need a motion then to continue this to? Um... I do want to clarify it was opened at the last meeting. He did his presentation okay. at the last meeting. There's just no testimony at this meeting. He asked that you skip over it. All right. So somebody want to make a motion to i'll make a motion to continue to may 18th thank you mr rogan do we have a second second by mr hamill further discussion all those in favor aye those opposed moved old business okay so the zoning regulation that's being continued to the 18th and then okay so on to planners comments that takes us out of our business on to the goody stuff so anything this is not Posted on the agenda as far, as far as discussion goes. I just want to get these to you. Okay. They are samples of the of cannabis surveys from other communities. Okay. And so I'm just going to pass those for everybody to take with them. And we're going to be working on um, developing survey and it looks to me like our council has something to add so uh we are working on getting others because we are aware of other communities that did go the survey route um and and look i mean some some of them use just a some and you can tell some of them use just a survey monkey mm -hmm. survey um and then you know some towns hired a consultant you know to to, to really control um you know responses and so on and so forth so um, you know, we'll give you the gamut of information on okay. that. We just don't have all of it at this point. So, right. well, you know, look for uh, further communication in the coming week uh, with regard to that. I did make some calls. Do we do we know if the council is going to be setting up a, a public hearing information meeting again? I don't know the answer to that question. Okay. But all right. We will inquire. Thank you. Appreciate that. All righty. Um, yeah. Their regular meeting last week, I don't know if you can continue their regular meeting last week to get the control of the system. So, um, and then we can get the uh, closer to another special meeting. So, when the general conversation are available, we have. Okay. All right. Yeah, they're. Yeah, lots going on. Okay, anything else for us, Lauren? I not believe I have. Do I have anything? Do we have anything we want to discuss with this? No. I think we're okay. Um, I just have a couple things that I'd like to just bring to the attention of the commission and the planner. Um, we had a back in the day, Valentine, Louis Valentine did a subdivision on Olinsky Boulevard, and I think Tim, you were probably around. Were you around yes. for Olinsky? Okay. Yes. Um, at the time that the subdivision was built, uh, which was an affordable housing subdivision, it's off of Tollgate Road. Um, the houses in the front on Tollgate Road and even within on Watch Hill um, were given street trees. We had a uh, Valentine plant street trees all the way through to, you know, add to the neighborhood feel and stuff. And um, I drove by uh, the corner of Aliski and um, Tollgate Road, that corner home had five trees. They were red maples. They were not blighted. They were in good condition. And I noticed that they've all been taken down and ground up. So all the street trees are gone on that corner house. I mean, his, his trees right now are in the back where his swimming pool is, but everything in front has just been leveled. 
And I don't know, because I think that that was part of the subdivision application and contract between the developer and those street trees were the purposely put there because there's a sidewalk there. And um, this is the corner of Aliski Boulevard and Tollgate Road. Um, it's There's a corner house, but all the trees are gone. There's five trees altogether. There were two on Aliski and three in the front on Tollgate. So I just wanted to bring it to their attention because I think that that was part of the site plan approval that I think Valentine kicked about planting those trees, but he did do that along with the boulevard. Um, the other option, the other thing I just want to quickly touch base on is the old Roby house, which is on Tollgate Road. It's a white old farm home. Um, it was sold uh, and the, a young couple bought it. Um, it's over by the party house, you know, the Airbnb house. I know the house you mean. It is, a, it has been, um, dealt with for unsightly materials and yeah i mean activities several times um with the new zoning officer he okay he is aware of the history of when you know and and follow through with change of of staff so yeah um, to his We're attention to put it back on you know pull it out of the pile it, yeah it, it's not an old yeah, because, thing it's still an active thing because there were some that he had that were old that were yeah yeah taken care of and just not because he like tore down the whole porch and then it's just like piled up in the corner i noticed he's got like a, a porcelain sink out there now and and this has been going on for years at first i thought it was just because of covid and it was just tough to get materials and stuff but it's just it's becoming a blighted property I don't even know if they're there. There's a car, there's a Mercedes that's there, which really kind of freaks me out because I sit there and say, you, you've got this property that's disheveled, yet you've got this brand new Mercedes SUV. And it was like, I, I can't, I, I don't get it. Anyway, so that was that. And then of course- I ask a question yeah. about houses on, uh, is it on the Aliski side of the street? The, uh, the, the house, it's right on the corner. It is. It's they red. They were red maples. I believe there are red maples. I mean, the other yeah, trees. I'm trying the, to identify the house. The ta uh, the neighbors all have trees in front of their house, so it's right on the corner. Uh, no, so not this way. Come on the other side. Yeah, 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 yeah. See where those nice little red trees are right here? They are all <laughs> gone, gone, gone. I don't know what they are, but thank you. But they're all they're all gone. Tell us what they are. I think they're thundercloud plums. Thank you. It's a pretty it's a trees along Colgate. What about these trees here? Um, I you know I think he left those there. But see what he did was he put a pool there, and then he put all this massive landscaping in the back now, and but the trees that are from the from the driveway, that tree's gone, that tree's gone on the corner, plus the other three, there's, well, there was three in front. So they're all gone. So it's just, it's, but the neighbors all have their nice healthy trees. Yeah, see, they were just bang, bang, bang. He just took them all, took them all down. But anyway. I like, I like to comment on this without the, this subdivision. The trees were, part of the subdivision approvals uh, and they're in the maps and, and on the maps and uh, uh, part of the approval. So they are, should be there. Uh, so I the think other, they need to put them back. The other thing that this is a affordable development, there's mm -hmm. affordable properties on this pro pro development. And I personally, because of our inventory for affordable homes, I personally looked up a couple of affordable deeds uh, and there is no age time for ex expiration of affordability units on that property, okay? That's what these, I was told that there was a 30, 40 year, whatever expiration of the affordable units and they don't count. Yeah. Okay. I looked up on the property owners deeds. I saw 
saw the restriction on the deeds, okay? The same thing as Valentine's other department uh, uh, development off of uh, Spruce Brook, okay? Yeah, the Fox and, Mill or what, Fox Hill or something. Right, and one of those homes just sold for 600 and something thousand dollars, which I'm under the information, I haven't looked up that deed, but that was one of the affordable homes in that development. And 600 or something thousand dollars surely is not affordable home. You know, so there was a windfall yeah. taken the homeowner. Okay. Uh, so I'm, I would like to see if we can investigate these developments that we have in place that were affordable homes development and why they're not on our inventory and why there is, if there is a, a year put on it that, that it's only got to be affordable for a certain amount of years, uh, why that was put on there, if there is. Uh, the ones that I know of, didn't, I didn't see those uh, restrictions. So, uh, you know, if they apply to the to the uh, affordable housing, which we're going to be address it, addressing at our next POCD uh, the thing, you know, uh, it may, makes a difference. Well, yeah, it really does because honestly, when we approved those, we never thought that the affordability would ever expire. But no. anyway, Maureen, I'm no. sorry. So, without me having been the one that did the research, I do know that a few years ago. Um, when we had an assistant in the, in the um, temporary um, planner in our office, he and Mark Kazakowski worked and created the, a list. And, a, you know, we have, I was actually trying to find it quickly, but I can't. Um, we have so many documents filed That's okay. um, under pressure. Um, but we do have a, which developments were approved by with the affordable component, what unit they are in the development that's all on the land records, which yes. you know, and you and yeah. most of the developments, it's only one or two units, three units in the entire development that has to meet that affordability. And mm -hmm. which ones expire and or the language that was used at the time on their deed restrictions, some of them are not meeting the language requirement for the 830G and therefore they aren't counted as an affordable housing unit by according to the statutory def um, definition of it. So they can't count, but they are still bound by the affordability as long as they didn't expire. And there, there was a lesser expiration, the statute over time from the time it was instituted, I'm gonna jump in and Jennifer probably knows the year, but it was in the eighties, I believe late eighties mid to late 80s that we got the affordable definition for that came out um, and it had a certain number of years. That number of years has extended. It's currently at 40, correct? 40 for the statutory requirement. And some, so some of the units have aged out. We definitely in our department, as well as for the um, affordable, I mean, the, yeah, the affordable housing plan We've, and the POCD, we've gone through those documents. We have listed with the years and the amounts, our social services, well, you've you've read. So when we've gotten um, items where we've included affordable units, they have to have an affordability plan and who the manager is of that. For most of the subdivisions, it's our, it's the town that does it. And our, so our social services director who, actually retired two weeks ago, but there is a replacement and she's been with the staff a very long time, um, is, you know, we, we've got to work on who's managing it, but they come to my office when one of the units that is deeded as re affordable, they come, they go through the applications, They're, they are diligent, they are monitoring who purchases those um, properties. We just had one, oh, this week you had another one because we've had, there was about a month or two ago. Um, 
because they'd like for the moving forward for the town not to be the entity responsible. And we've made it that way for most of the multifamilies that have included affordable since I've been managing and I think even uh, probably up to a decade ago, you know, we've had entities listed as the affordability manager as opposed to town staff. It's it's cumbersome to go through housing applications. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just, I really just wanted to, you know, bring that to the forefront there. Um, well, you found it. It's probably what I'm yeah. looking at. I just can't look at it. And, and then the last note that I have is the party house on Orchard Road. Uh, or we're, as we're going into summer, one of the neighbors alerted me that seems to be different couples living in that house. They seem to be it's flowing in and hard. flowing out. There's one car that stays there all the time, but then all the other ones are different. You never see, you never see the blind. Somebody said that it is an Airbnb, but I don't know. I, yeah. You know what concerns me about that? Is the trespassing. It can be anything going on in there. Anything. Yeah. They can have a meth lab going on in there. No. Well, we're com we're coming up on the spring and no. summer, and at one of the neighbors that's in the neighborhood said that they saw it listed on Airbnb again as a rental for you know social events and stuff, and and I'm thinking, oh boy, but mm -hmm. I don't I don't know. I didn't check Airbnb. I just they just said, well, we saw it listed. Supposedly it was listed for sale, and then it was taken down. And but the blinds are always closed not that there's anything wrong with that but i never see anyone really living there so it's but i just bring it to your attention vehicles and there's one main one but there's different vehicles there that concerns me and there always seems to be like a lot of trash in their yeah. trash cans yeah. i mean it's always overflowing i'm like what the what the hell's going on in there but anyway okay that connecticut grower is going to be a meth lab what chain one highway oh is that what that was yeah. oh jesus I, I do okay have a question. all right um the property for sunny borders i asked if that can be put on the flight list has someone purchased that it's um as far as i know it was under contract before i went on vacation an application has gone to wetlands for some fill but i believe that's all under minister Bannerup's name okay. i don't think it had the a, a actual purchaser, we can pick it up quick to see if it gets yeah. transferred. Uh, but they, yeah, and they, um, Thank you for joining us.